Four young people murdered after they were kidnapped from work at the Burger Chef restaurant in Speedway. The Speedway Police Department and the Indiana State Police announced that the bodies of Jane C. Free, age 20, Mark S. Flemons, age 17, Daniel R. Davis, age 16, Ruth E. Shelton, age 17, have been discovered late this afternoon in Johnson County, Indiana. It's been 35 years. This case takes absolute priority over all other matters at this time. The scene was never really processed as a crime scene. But it was a crime scene. A couple found the four young people murdered. Their bodies 20 miles away, scattered in a wooded area off State Road 37 in Johnson County. They were killed three different ways. How many of you have fond memories of going out to your favorite fast food restaurant with your friends or family? Whether it be McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, or one of the many other chains out there, it is safe to say that the last thing we would expect is to be face to face with life or death while simply enjoying your food. Well, in the late hours of November 17th, 1978, the small town of Speedway, Indiana, was shaken to its very core by this very nightmare. In Speedway's entire history, only two homicides have been recorded before the tragedies that occurred in the year of 1978. Before we get into this story though, I need to add some context and information to better understand these events. This is the disturbing story of the Burger Chef murders. To start off, I should give you a brief rundown of what Burger Chef is. Burger Chef was a pretty popular fast food chain that was founded in 1954 in Indianapolis, Indiana. The chain had enjoyed some pretty solid success until they folded in 1996, roughly about 25 years ago. Burger Chef, at its peak, had over 1,000 locations across the United States and Canada. In 1982, the General Foods Corporation eventually sold the trademark to Hardee's, also known as Carl's Jr. Now that we have the basic understanding of the establishment this all took place in, we can now look into the more gruesome details of the story. It was 11 p.m. on Friday night at the Speedway Burger Chef location. Four young employees were closing the restaurant and preparing to leave. These employees were 20-year-old assistant manager, Jane Freed, 16-year-olds, Daniel Davis and Mark Flemons, and 18-year-old, Ruth Shelton. Sometime between 11 p.m. and midnight, something truly odd happened. Because at midnight, a fellow employee stops by and noticed the four employees were nowhere to be found. This co-worker noticed the entire restaurant was empty, and upon further investigation, noticed a door to the safe was left open, and the back door was also left open. As any sane person would do, this employee called the police ASAP. Police arrived at the scene shortly after receiving the call. According to reports, the police did not seemingly take this all that seriously initially. The reported loss from the safe was only around $581, which in today's money would be roughly around $2,300. There were no real signs of struggle, and all the police found were two empty currency bags and an empty roll of tape. One of the saddest parts of the story, though, is the lack of diligence behind the initial investigation. Authorities, for whatever reason, seemed to be convinced that the young employees simply robbed the burger chef and went off on a spree for fun. This theory and lack of actual effort put into the investigation gave the burger chef manager the right to clean up the crime scene. This act, perhaps unknowingly to the manager, completely wiped out most of the vital evidence needed to piece the puzzle together and solve this case. Police thought since there was no obvious sign of struggle, that this was likely a case of embezzlement, though hundreds of dollars worth of coins had been left untouched. 
to make things even odder. All the belongings of the employees were left behind. If they stole the money and went on the run, wouldn't they take their purses, important identification, and jackets? As mentioned before, the scene was cleaned up due to this assumption. I don't know about you guys watching, but if I had been robbed and four of my employees were missing, the last thing I would do is clean up the crime scene and forget it ever happened. Local Speedway police officer, Buddy Elwanger, admitted that the investigation wasn't the best, even being quoted as saying, we screwed it up from the beginning. The crime scene was not only cleaned up, but there were no photos taken of the scene before it was cleaned. I know, I cover a lot of cases that seem to have a heavy smell of lazy investigating. This has to be one of the worst I have covered when it comes to lazy investigations. The following Saturday morning, the four employees did not show up, and Jane Freed's car, a 70s Chevrolet Vega, was found parked across the town with the doors partially locked. Concern among the town began to grow. It started to become crystal clear that the employees were abducted while closing that night. It is thought the attack may have started as they began to take out the trash from the back door. Aside from that though, officials have virtually no clue what could have happened. On Sunday afternoon, a couple of hikers came across four bodies roughly 20 miles away, tucked into a rural area of woods in Johnson County. The horrors did not end there though. Oh no, things are about to get much worse. Daniel Davis and Ruth Shelton had been shot with a 38 caliber firearm multiple times, execution style. Jane Freed was stabbed two times in the chest. She had been stabbed with such force that the knife had broken off inside of her chest. Mark Flemons was beaten to death with what was speculated to be a chain of some sort. Ultimately, Mark died from choking on his own blood. All four were still wearing their Burger Chef uniforms. Money, watches, and other valuables were found on the victims which may show robbery was not the only motive behind this killing. This is sadly where the case runs cold. Since the crime scene was erased almost as soon as it was discovered, and the police not taking this seriously until over a day had passed, this case never had a chance. As always, with any unsolved cold case, there are many speculations and theories as to what may have happened here. I am of course going to cover these and share my own thoughts. The most popular theory I have seen people pass around is that this was a robbery gone wrong. Some think that maybe one or all of the victims recognized the perpetrators and they decided to get rid of the loose ends. Mark Flemons was not scheduled to work that day, in fact he was covering for another employee. Officials think that maybe he was the one who recognized the killers since they would not have planned on him being there. This theory would make sense if this was an inside job of sorts. If one of the ex or current employees were behind this, then it would be entirely possible that they knew when the burger chef would be closed and when they would be taking out the garbage. If someone did recognize them, I guess it would be justification in the robber's mind to kill them. While this theory is the leading one by far, there is possibly evidence that could point in other directions. On the night of the murders, an unnamed eyewitness claims to have seen two suspicious men in a car outside of the burger chef a little before closing time. Apparently, the men were both Caucasian and looked to be in their 30s. One was clean shaven with light colored hair and the other had a beard. The police created clay models of the suspects in an attempt to further the investigation. The evidence that points in a different direction from an inside job doesn't end there. Later that year, a man in a local bar in a nearby city called Greenwood bragged that he had been involved in the killings. Police did find the man and apparently questioned him. He passed a polygraph test and was set free. As many of us know, polygraphs are incredibly unreliable and are easily beaten. This man did share some information of an alleged fast food robbery gang, 
which according to officials had been on their radar. They were starting to think this gang may have been a part of this crime. This actually didn't turn out to be a complete farce and waste of time. While following up on those prospective leads, officials cited a man who looked almost exactly like their suspect recreation in Franklin, Indiana. The man was summoned to a police lineup. Oddly, the man shaved his beard the night before the lineup for the first time in over five years. Not to mention, his neighbor, who was not named by the mystery man in the bar, had been sent to prison recently over strong arm robberies with a shotgun. Even more interesting, another suspect who looked an awful lot like the light-haired man from the witness testimony was also sent to prison for robbing fast food restaurants. This is ultimately why I covered this case. This is just like the recent unsolved murder cases I have covered. The police have all the pieces to the mystery, but no confession to make it all clear. Even after offering numerous plea deals, the suspects would just not speak to the police. Speculation at the time claimed these murders were connected to the other crimes that had been happening in the area. Some think the Speedway bombings from September that same year could have been connected. But after officials solved that crime, they determined that it had nothing to do with the Burger Chef murders. The unsolved murder of Julia Cyphers was also commonly said to have been connected to this crime in some way. But this is unlikely, as it is tied to Brett Kimberlin and the aforementioned Speedway bombings. Officials investigated this case all around the country, though. They cast a wide net across Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Texas. But sadly, it looks like they never really found any evidence or leads that may help solve the case. Officer Ken York, who was one of the original investigators on the case, mentioned it is highly suspicious that the Greenwood suspect and the bearded suspect had both died from suicide and an apparent heart attack just after the release of the armed robber who was named by the man from the bar. Now, there are many other theories I could cover that I have read on the internet and in a few write-ups about this case. To save some time and to keep this video at a consumable length, I will cover one last theory that honestly may be the most plausible. We have heard everything from an inside job to fast food robbery gangs. This theory is a bit more basic, but does have a lot of evidence to back it up, maybe even more so than the others. In 1984, Detective Mel Wilsey of the Marion County Sheriff's Department got a call from an inmate currently serving a 95-year prison sentence for sexual assault. This man's name was Donald Forrester. He claimed to have been involved in the murders and was willing to confess and give officials all the details of the crime. He wanted to make a deal in order to avoid being sent to an infamously violent Indiana State Prison. At first, the whole thing seemed too good to be true, but when David Forrester started relaying information that matched up to the crime, officials began to pay closer attention. Donald was a career criminal and was in fact living in Speedway at the time of the murders. Detective Wilsey got a court order to bring Forrester to Marion County, where he would confess to shooting Daniel Davis and Ruth Shelton. He led police to where the bodies were found in the woods. He accurately described the way the bodies were found and how they were killed. He also knew the knife handle was broken, which was not known to many. Donald Forrester would go on to claim Jane Freed's brother owned money to a rather big drug deal. So, he and three others had gone to Burger Chef to threaten and scare her. Mark Flemons intervened in an attempt to protect Jane, and a fight broke out. Mark was knocked down, and his head was hit on the bumper. Thinking Mark was dead, Donald and the others abducted the four employees and killed them to ensure no witnesses remain. Donald was adamant that he only killed Daniel and Ruth by shooting them. He claims the other men killed Mark and Jane. He led police to a river he claimed to have thrown the gun into. After searching this river though, the police were unable to obtain the gun. Donald's ex-wife 
claimed he drove her out to the wooded area to pick up spent bullet casings, and when they returned home, he flushed them. After officials searched the septic tank of the home, which was now owned by a completely different family, they did find spent 38 caliber shell casings. Sadly, after someone in the sheriff's office leaked information that Donald Forrester was working with the police, he stopped giving any information and claimed he had been coerced into his confession. Donald Forrester would never speak a word to authorities about this again and would die in prison at the age of 55 from cancer. Despite the hundreds of thousands of hours put into this investigation, police are no closer to solving this crime. Even after a $25,000 reward was offered by a burger chef themselves, no information has ever been obtained. This case remains officially unsolved. With the advancements of DNA investigation, this case could potentially be opened again and solved. With there being so many conflicting stories and the poor police work at the start, this case really deserves more coverage in the media and a fair investigation. I hate the outcome of this case, simply because I can't honestly say I 100% believe in any one of these theories. I do believe Donald Forrester was involved. He had to have, at the very least, been a part of the crime to have known the information that he did. Was Donald a part of the fast food robbery gang with all these other men? Was this truly the work of a robbery gone wrong? With all the details pointing more toward a robbery turned quadruple homicide, why is the inside job scenario still the leading theory? I guess we may never know, but it is my hope that with this series I can shine a bit of light on these otherwise dark cases that are lost to time. November 17, 1978. Four fast food workers disappeared from a restaurant on Crawfordsville Road at closing time. Days later, hikers found their bodies over 20 miles away in a remote part of Johnson County. Well, this area through here was a lot heavier brush, uh, some larger trees, smaller trees. Former state police investigator Ken York visited the site with Eyewitness News 15 years ago. He retired before solving the crime, but he believes that somewhere between two to four people did it. Thanks for watching this video on what happened and the Burger Chef killings. Honestly, I really don't know what to believe in this one. The final theory we covered in this video seems like the most probable to me, so I think I might have to be inclined to follow that one for now. If any of you guys have any theories or ideas that you would like to share, please comment them down below. I would love to start a nice conversation about this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as it really does help me out a ton. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes. And the more eyes we can get on these cases, the more potential we have to help. If you guys are new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video. I upload videos almost every single day on all things natural and supernatural. If you're not aware, you can download your favorite scary stories from the swamp on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about everywhere else you listen to podcasts. I really do appreciate all of your guys' support on this series. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.